Hey team, Gavin here, and uh, this video is three best exercises to lose body fat. Come with me. Hey guys, I've got your attention. It's uh, Gavin here from Growing Younger. We're the only fitness studio in New Zealand that help people over the age of 40. So that means you have 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, all the way up to about 82. So this video is about how to lose body fat after 40 or 50 or 60 as you get older, okay? And what I want to do really is give you some real truths about what it actually takes to lose body fat. It's not as easy as you think. It's also not as hard as you think either. And look at this wall behind me. We're responsible for helping dozens and dozens of hundreds and hundreds of people lose, on average, 20 kilos within our fitness facility, which is pretty damn cool, all right? So I want to take you uh, with me just into the office, and I'm going to go through... What so let's dive in. Number one. Okay, so a little bit about me. I've personally lost over 20 kilos and I've kept that off for 14 years, okay? So I do know a little bit about body fat loss and losing weight, okay? I also helped lots of people transform their lives to lose weight themselves, okay? So I do know what it actually personally takes to lose weight, but I also know what it takes to coach others as well, right? So that's my, uh, my kind of backstory very quickly. So when it comes to losing weight, okay, we, we're always looking for a quick fix. We're always looking for that magic bullet that's going to help us lose the body weight as fast as we possibly can. And what people really don't like, whether it be lack of patience or frustration, because it takes time and effort, they don't want to do it. They don't want to invest the time into losing the body weight, right? So exercise number one really is to start moving more than you are right now. So there's something called a NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. It means walking around and moving, cardio, being active, right? So I'm going to give you a kind of category. So if you don't currently do any cardio right now and you've got a very sedentary job, then you need to start moving more, okay? And what I recommend, and not just me, the Heart Health Association and lots of you know people who are well more informed than me, talk about doing 150 minutes of cardio per week. If you can start doing 150 minutes of cardio per week, moderate intensity, not really going crazy like I was in the gym doing all these crazy burpees and box jumps and stuff, is about being more active. Because if you can sustain cardiovascular exercises, you will burn more calories off than trying to do the burpees, right? Because what you tend to see, burpees are by far, pound for pound, minute for minute, the best fat burning exercise you could ever possibly do. You burn about 14 calories a minute, I think is, is what it is. Whereas walking is about seven calories per minute, okay? Roughly, roughly that number. But you cannot sustain burpees for 60 minutes. You could probably sustain burpees for 60 seconds, okay? Which means you've only burned off 14 calories, but you can go for a walk for 60 minutes, okay? So based on that, you might burn 320 calories. Now that is really all you need to be able to start to burn some body fat, okay? On the flip, on the back side of that, what that extra cardio is going to do is going to make you feel fitter. It's going to give you more energy. It's going to release endorphins to make you feel better, okay? So realistically, cardio should be one of the first things you start to do, okay? So next thing we're going to look at, exercise number two. Number two is going to be resistance training or weight training. Certainly as you get over the age of 40, our muscle mass will decrease, okay? It just does. You've heard of the term use it or lose it. You either, if you don't, you know, if you don't like, if you don't use your leg muscles, they will become as strong as the load you put upon them. So if all you do is stand up on a chair three times a day, they will adapt to be that strong. They don't need to be any stronger. So if you're not doing any kind of resistance training, then your muscle mass will definitely decrease. And if your muscle mass does decrease, it means you burn less calories at rest, okay? Which is like unbelievable because Muscle is an active tissue. It requires calories to survive. And if you've got less muscle on your body, then ultimately you're going to burn less calories. Simple as that. So you need to factor in resistance training. And resistance training is just putting resistance on your muscles. So if you're not doing resistance training, you've got to start doing resistance training. I know it's scary and I know that you're not quite sure what to do in the gym. But like realistically, we've got four or five movement patterns of a human being. We stand, we, we squat, squat pattern. And put some, if I can put some stuff on the, on the screen, I will. Um, we do a, a deadlift kind of pattern, which is a hip hinge where your hinge moves back. Then you've got a, an upper body pulling movement. Okay, so you, you're sitting there pulling on resistance with bands or whatever. We're going to work the posture on your back. Then you've got a pushing exercise like a press up or an incline press up or a bench press. Then you've got a shoulder press. Okay. Um, 
And then you've got a, a, an, upper, an, an upper pull, so like a lat pull down kind of exercise, working back in two different ways, all right? Really, they're the only main exercises you probably need to start with to get going. So when we program exercises in Grown Younger, realistically, that's the formula we use. It's the, the seven exercises, compound movements, which means you're using multiple joints for one exercise, much more efficient, burn much more calories because you're using muscle, multiple muscle groups. And we put those together in a nice workout and you can do those three times a week in about 45 minutes. The resistance training needs to be like number two on the list. People will argue it should be number one, number two, right? Whatever, you just top three exercises, you need to be doing it. And it doesn't need to be hard to start. So if you currently do no squats whatsoever and you start doing 10 squats, that's better than doing nothing. Then as you get better, you can add three sets and four sets, and maybe you can add weight to the next set to make it harder. And then you follow a principle called progressive overload. And progressive overload just means you do a little bit more than last time. You get a little bit stronger, get a little bit fitter, you walk a little bit further, walk a little bit faster. That is it. And if you keep doing that, your body is gonna, you're gonna challenge your body to keep getting better, better and stronger, okay? And all of a sudden, your, your sort of set point is here of not very fit, not very strong, and all of a sudden, your set point is there. Now you're fitter and stronger. And if you keep doing progressive overload and maintain it, you're going to build muscle mass. You're going to build more calories at rest. You're going to get stronger. You're going to get fitter. You have more energy. Fantastic. Okay. So then we're looking at number three exercise. And number three exercise. Number three. Okay. Now, this isn't so much a physical exercise, more of a preparation kind of exercise. And it really comes down to understanding how much food you eat on a daily basis, okay? Most people eat way too much and they don't realize they eat too much. Like if I had a pound or a dollar for every time someone come in to see me at the fitness team and says, I already eat healthy. Like my standard response is now, I believe you. I believe that you believe that you eat healthy. However, you can eat too much healthy. So I'll give you an example. I had a client, Mike, he's out on the wall there and he could not lose weight at the beginning, all right? Couldn't. And I broke down, sat with him, said, like, what are you eating? I'm, well, I eat a really healthy shake for breakfast. All right, tell me about your shake. Peanut butter, okay, milk, protein powder, uh, what else is in there? Yogurt, chia seeds, fruit, okay, banana. And when we worked this thing out, he was eating nearly 800 to 1,000 calories in his shake in the morning. So it is healthy, super healthy, super high in calories. His daily calorie limit was about 1,800 per day. And he was smashing down a thousand calorie uh, shake in the morning. When we dialed that back, understood his calories, learned to read food labels, learned to understand portion sizes, he was then able to lose over 10 kilos and improve his quality of life to the point where he was doing half marathons, which is amazing, right? So like, you've got to understand this thing, because if you don't, you will always suffer. You will always struggle, okay? And like, even if you just look at the food label occasionally and go, well, this, this is how many calories. Understand that, like, I don't know, a one, one sausage link for argument's sake is nearly 250 to 300 calories. One sausage link. So when you're having your, like, sausage sandwiches or, or sausage and bangers and mash or whatever, your meals are massively calorie dense because of the fat content within those meals, same as burgers. If you opt for lean proteins and whole foods and healthier versions, you're going to decrease your calories by default, okay? So you've got to understand what your nutrition is, understand the calories in your food, um, and obviously start to monitor that. It is an exercise. It's going to take time and practice everything else. And I'll give you a really good example, right? If you're a person that needs to eat 1,800 calories per day, okay, um, and you're awake for 16 hours, all right, then asked. The number is 112 calories per hour, okay? It isn't that much. Your latte is 161 calories. That handful of nuts that you had is 200 calories. That muffin you've just eaten for morning tea is two to 300 calories. So therefore, if you're awake for 16 hours and you eat maybe five or six times a day, then each meal or each opportunity that you should be eating is about 330 odd calories, maybe 400 calories if your snacks are lower. It isn't as much food as you think it is, okay? And if you don't understand what the calories are in your food, you're not going to be able to hit that number. So it's really interesting to, to, to see that when you do give people calorie limits and they've never counted calories or tracked calories before, they always assume it's too high when it actually is not. You're already over-consuming those foods anyway. That's why you're overweight, okay? That's why you need to lose body fat. 